Hey all, how are we doing? Uh, been making the most of the sun this week, catching up on some rays, getting a little tan going. But I thought, what an opportunity with all this beautiful sunshine to demonstrate a bit of Asador cooking. Um, as you know, we have Asador 44 as well as the Bar 44s, which are about tapas. Asador is a very different beast altogether. A lot of people think it's uh, a steak restaurant. Actually, it's not a steak restaurant at all. In Spain, asadors are really a style of restaurant, which is cooking over fire or in a fire, so roasting or grilling. And you get asadors that specialize in fish, beautiful whole fish, in meat like uh, old beef like this, in different regions, suckling pig or milk fed lamb. So they're very specific. And what we wanted to do with Asador 44 is bring all our travels and our experience of cooking in different Asadors across northern Spain. So to bring our experiences from that back to Wales and cook with the world's finest sort of produce from Spain and pair it with some just incredible Welsh seasonal produce and just modernise it slightly. Of course, all Asadors equally uh, have incredible wine lists. So. We didn't want to change that aspect of an Asador because we love wine uh, as much or as, if not more than anyone. We're going to pair this with an incredible red wine later. We're going to be cooking one cut. We are cooking a steak tonight, but it just happens to be a chuleton, one kilo piece of 11 year old uh, meat from, from Galicia. This piece of meat today will be cooked with three ingredients. The, the meat itself, we'll talk about that. Uh, sea salt. Uh, which we're going to put a lot on there and the other ingredient is the charcoal and our good friends at uh, London Log Company are supplying us with this at the moment. Just look at that, it looks like it's still part of a tree and this is incredible home oak from Spain and it's actually the trees um, that our Iberico pigs that we use graze under during the Montanera season uh, eating their acorns so we're using that to cook over open flame cocotte liton. And I say that's an, in, an ingredient because it is. It's not um, a fuel, although obviously it's producing heat. It's an ingredient because it produces huge amounts of flavor. So I'm gonna whip this away because I'm not gonna go through all the recipes with the vegetables because um, it will take too long. I really wanna talk about the fire. Hello, Rosie. The meat. <laughs> and how we're going to cook it, talk about the meat, the fire, and how we present it Asador style, and then talk about drinking some beautiful wine with it on a Friday night. Right, down to the nitty gritty now. We're going to talk a bit about the charcoal and a bit more in depth about the meat we're using. We've got chimney on the go. You can obviously do these on gas barbecues or inside on the hob, it's not a problem, but the essence of what we do is all about that wood and, and smoke and flavour. We've got a fire lighter underneath the chimney. Put the chimney almost full with the charcoal. Um, and what you want to do is get it, it doesn't take long, this has only been on a couple of minutes, to get it going like this. And you can see, I don't know if you can see them in there, but it's getting white sort of heat already. As soon as that starts to happen, what I'll do is remove the grate and pour everything into the base of the kettle drum. And when that happens, you're pretty much another minute or two just to get the grill hot, the grate hot, and you're ready to go. I'm not gonna cook the beef first, I'm gonna cook these peppers first. Uh, classic Spanish dish, but I'm gonna cook them dirty, straight in the coals, and blister them all over, then cling film them when they cool, to cool down, then peel them, and we'll do a lovely simple salad with them later to go with the beef, beef and roast peppers. Stunning. Let's talk about the beef. Okay. We're using this bad boy. Look at that. Okay. A 10 year old Galician um, breed. Um, we use one of three breeds. Okay. We don't just stick to one, go one of three. And Jose, our guy up there, he chooses the, the cuts to the racks for us based on what he thinks he's looking for in terms of fat covering and in terms of marbling. And this is a beautiful chuleton. A chuleton is a chop in Spain, okay? It could be from the rib end or from the sirloin end. This is from the sirloin end, it's a straighter um, bone cut. 
and this is going to be beautiful. Cooked on the bone and we're going to cook it uh, to 49 degrees. So it's going to be really rare and rested. But the idea is you bring it out a good few hours before you're cooking. In the restaurant, we've got different racks at different heats to bring it up to blood temperature before you cook it. So you're bringing it up to 38 degrees or so before you put it on the grill for an extra 10 degrees. And I'll show you how the cooking process works, but it's simplicity, but you have to be precise. It's really, really important. Because if you're gonna pay, this is a one kilo piece of meat. You're gonna pay quite a lot of money for that in a restaurant for this quality. This is, will be served in Asador's through to sort of three star Michelin restaurants around the world. But the important thing is if you see a big price tag, don't think that's for one person. Uh, this is being dry aged in uh, our cabinets now. Because of lockdown also, this is going on 110 days. So what dry aging is, is aging in a fridge uh, that's very, very low temperature, one degree or so, high humidity, and also Himalayan salt blocks in there. And what that does is draw the moisture out of the meat over a period of time, which is controlled, and you're intensifying the flavor of the meat, okay? That's what dry aging is. Don't ever bother with wet, wet aging. Wet aging means it's just been sitting in a vac pack in its juices and going horrible, okay? This is a beautiful project we've got going on in Monmouthshire uh, with Neil Power Butchers with Welsh Blacks and Hereford breed beef. You can see the difference in, let's look at the size difference, okay? Most British beef goes to slaughter within 18 months of being born. This is an 11 year old animal. Um, it's not, this doesn't happen in the UK. Um, so this is not bred for pure tenderness, it's bred for flavor and texture. And I'm gonna show you that later. I'm gonna cook this one as well, just to see, but look at the size difference. So I'm gonna get cracking because I'm burning up next to this. Um, we'll get the peppers out of the way, then I'll just show you cooking the beef and we'll plate everything up together, to serve the wine. Have a look at this. We've cooked the peppers. They're now in cling film. We're going to skin them and just plate them up. But look at the beautiful fire. That is your cooking temperature. That's well over 400 degrees now. So it's super, super hot. Okay. Uh, just a quick mention. Obviously, beef like this is hard to find, but we've got some uh, Welsh beef to do as well. Times like this, we can't get out. We can't. Apart from, okay, you can do essential shopping and stuff. Most amazing butchers locally, we've been using our local butchers as well as ones we use for work. They'll be delivering, they'll be doing orders, all sorts, the same with our veg guys. So please make the most of them. And they do incredible meat and you'll get personal service off them rather than the bigger sort of shops around. So use them. Gonna show you how to cook this Asador style, okay? No oil, anything. You can see all the marbling of fat running through it. You don't need any oil. All we're gonna use is dry heat, the charcoal and salt. Going straight on. Okay, and this may alarm some of you. We looked at different processes across the north of Spain. So we're gonna put a lot of snow in the form of sea salt across there. And look at that straight away. I need to get some tongs to move it. You're going to get insane flavour off that. So we're going to salt that on one side Sorry. only because we're covering it completely. That might look alarming to a lot of Brits, but this is how we would do it sort of from uh, the Basque Country all the way across Greenland, Spain through to Galicia. Cover it on one side. When you flip it, uh, it will keep what it wants and anything else will drop off into the fire, okay? What we're looking for on both sides is a complete, beautiful crust. Dark, dark crust. Not burnt, even though this is <laughs> flaming up quite a lot. Um, the charcoal you may get from the shops locally to you, the sort of FFC certified uh, sustainable charcoal probably won't fire up as hot as this, but um, you want it boiling hot, create that Maillard reaction, the caramelization of the, the crust and skin, 
and then you turn it over. So we're gonna do that now. You hear the crackle? That's the salt. Okay. Dripping into the fire. And keep this going. If anyone at home, if you do this every day in the restaurant, you get very used to how meat cooks. If you're doing it at home, always use one of these, which is a probe. Okay, stick that into the middle of the meat. If you take it off onto a chopping board for a second. Once you get to 49 degrees, for, for us it's 49 degrees. Once you get there, that's good enough. And you take it off. Uh, a lot of acidors in Spain, weirdly, uh, don't rest their beef like this. Um, we played around with it, but we actually think you should rest it really well. Okay, and so once that's resting, I'm gonna finish off, marinated up some lovely chicory, uh, purple sprout and broccoli, asparagus, and we'll finish that on the coals whilst that's resting, the beef's resting and we slice it up at or style, take it off the bone. So I'll cook this one as well, and we'll see you when it's ready. Beef's rested, got beautiful salads here. That's the roast peppers, chicory marinated in lots of stuff, then on the fire. Same with the purple sprouting, and the asparagus with some lovely cured anchovies. This won't be a normal color that you'd see, because this has been dry aged for a hundred plus days, okay. A lot of people don't like the fat, but with this, the fat is gonna be beautifully yellow, gnarly, gorgeous. Okay. And remember, this had a long rest. Actually cooked through a little bit more than we might in the restaurant, but it's sort of beautifully pink luscious and that marbling of fat right the way through has kept that super super moist so you can see you could cook this for three four people maybe it's the main course because it's so rich there we go uh, chef's perks and take that bit for myself if I just, sorry, I'm eating up right there. And where's my sea salt bone? Just a bit of sea salt over the top. Add your bone. You could do this different ways, but doesn't that look stunning to eat? You could smell that. You would love it. All that's left for me to do with those accompaniments is choose a nice wine glass. I'll talk to you very quickly about the wine, even though I could go on for hours, but this is making me so hungry in all this food. We've chosen tonight a super special cut of meat, so you're having to have a super, super special wine to go with it. It's obviously a red and it's from Ribera del Duero, one of the top two wine regions in Spain and the world. And it's uh, Dominio Fournier, Criantha, okay. Uh, it's made from Tinta del Pei, which is uh, Tempranillo essentially, but that's what they call it in this region. This um, wine, the grapes were grown right on the banks in the meander of the Duero River. Uh, up at sort of 830 meters above sea level, gnarly old vine, um, Tinta del Pei Tempranillo from Ribera. Spent a year in French oak, and it's going to have that beautiful, rich cherry color. Don't know if you can see that on there. Sorry. Oh, I'm going to get it in the chicory. Um, beautiful, rich, but also still that youth in it, and it's going to have bags of fruit, silky. Um, and, and from that French oak, beautifully balanced, it's a high-end wine, and it's gonna, you know, really match the, the tag of that high-end beef. So enjoy, I'm gonna get stuck in. Please remember to like all our stuff on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, 
and on YouTube as well. So follow us, tag us, etc. retweet, blah, blah, blah. So thanks guys. See you soon.